artists along the Golden Road experience the Northwest through its art and the artists who live here. Northwest artists are passionate about art, and Golden Road Arts extends their passion through education. We're on an arts mission, introducing children to art. I'm going to do a simple project today. This is a hot air balloon. Kids love hot air balloons. I like hot air balloons myself as long as I'm on the ground when they're in the air. So um, a balloon is just a big oval. And instead of being connected at the bottom, it's flat. And then it has these lines that come down. These are the strings that hold the basket. And in this little basket, people actually ride. I don't know. They have a death wish, I guess. I'm not riding in anything that's going up in the air with heat, but some people actually love it. So you can see we have our hot air balloon. I've drawn this with a pencil, and then I'm going to go over it with black marker. But you can see that if I, um, if I have my balloon and I make my pattern inside and I just draw the line straight across, it doesn't look very round. It looks pretty flat, so it's not very attractive. So what we want to do is we want to make our lines go in some kind of a pattern. It could be a circle pattern like this. That makes it look round. If you brought it out from the top, kind of like an umbrella. So you just have to think about, you know, if you want it to look flat or if you want it to look like it's got some dimension to it. So we're going to make the pattern here. And then I've got lots of lines drawn here, some vertical lines as well as our zigzag line. And then one of the things that, that you know, hot air balloons are very colorful. So to go back and color each one of these sections a different color, It'll be a beautiful hot air balloon. So you want to do that. Be sure to get your name on the paper. I always thought like kids to get their name on the paper. So um, they look remarkably alike when they're done. You want to make sure that each child uh, gets their own. And we actually are going to have a, a template of this on our website when we um, get everything done so that you'll actually be able to download um, a picture of this hot air balloon. And you can just use that if you want, if the children are too young to actually draw their own. So the next process that we're going to do is, um, this is a boat in the water. And so what we've done is this is just a crayon, crayon drawing. And um, I'll just emphasize it with my black marker here. So you just start out by making these wiggly lines. This is the top of your water. And then on the top of the water you have your boat and with its mast and its... Uh, sail. And then each one of these sections is going to have different pattern. And you can do any pattern you want. That's the great thing about art. It's pretty hard to do it wrong. So you can see that I have drawn here lines, circles, squares, just everything that you could possibly think of. And then I've colored each section a different color. So when I get all done with this, I've got this really nice drawing. And it was very, very easy to do. And um, this will keep kids occupied for quite a while. And it's a good, a good to, a section to where you can talk about boats and talk about water. And, um, you know, there's just lots of possibilities for teaching with something like this. Then the next project we're going to do is... Um, this is a, um, I call this a kind of, it's a squiggly monster, and I wish I could say that I um, thought of this myself, but I actually saw it on the internet, and I just thought it was so attractive. So what you do is you take a piece of paper, and get a clean sheet here, you take a piece of paper and you um, fold it in half, And you just start drawing your squiggly lines. You want to draw them across the paper any way you want. Doesn't matter how you draw it. It'll all be good. So you can see I've got my real squiggly line. And then I'm going to draw, um, go over this with a black marker because um, I want to be able to see through the paper.
These are worshipable markers so that if the children get them on themselves, in theory you can wash it off. Washing out of clothes, maybe. It's always a question on whether that will happen. Now at this point, when you look at it, you can kind of see it through here, but not really well. So what you really need to do is take this to the window, hold this up to the window, where you can see through it. If I hold it up to the light, can you see through it a little bit? You can see through it and then draw it. And then what you do is you open it up. You open it up like this and you say, okay, what looks like the top and what looks like the bottom? Um, what part do I think would be the head? And then you can see on this one, I made the head actually um, right in the middle. I didn't put it all the way at the top, but children can do whatever they want. And then they can do um, lines across here. I just colored it different colors, but you could they could do it any way they want. And these are, um, these are kind of squiggly um, monsters and very, very pretty. So a fun thing for kids to do. Easy, doesn't require much, crayons, markers, and paper. Another thing you can do with kids, it is this, this is really, really fun. Kids love this. These are masks. And so how you do this is you take a piece of paper, fold it in half, cut it in half because kids have small faces so you don't need it to be, um, you know, you don't want it to be huge. Then you want to say, okay, here's the nose. This is probably the middle. So we're going to do a mask of some kind of an animal. And then we got to have an eye. And kids' eyes are remarkably close together because their faces are small you um, think, oh, you'll put the eyes over here, but really they have to be pretty close together for the kids to see out of them. And then we're going to do some kind of a little nose thing here, maybe an eyebrow. And then we're going to have some kind, of a, some kind of a thing that goes around, maybe an ear that goes around like this. So this doesn't have to be real fancy. It doesn't even have to be the same on both sides. It can be very, very simple. And then um, you color it and have the kids um, cut it out, color it, and then cut the eyes out. And the, uh, it's very, very hard to cut these eyes out. It's just like you just say, oh, why did I ever do this? This is so much work to do these stupid eyes. But if you get a small, a small scissors and you um, kind of poke it right in the middle, and then if you cut from the back, if you cut from the back, it's fairly easy to cut out the eye. There you go. And then you can either tape or um, poke a hole and um, use some yarn or string or whatever you have to tie it onto their face. And um, what happens when you're using paper that's as lightweight as computer paper is where you poke the hole, it'll tear immediately. And the kids will put it on and it'll rip and they'll cry and it'll be sad. So what you want to do is where you put the hole you want to put a piece of tape to reinforce it on each side, probably on the back, just so you reinforce where you put your put your string, because otherwise it'll tear and it'll be somebody will be real unhappy. You can see here I've done a bear and a cat, and we will actually have um, the drawings for this on our website, so you'll just be able to download these templates, and um, um, we'll do a bunch because they're very fun, and I have a lot of them in my. Um, files. So we're going to do that. And then the other thing that you can do, this is very, very fun. And I wish I could say I thought of this, but you know, there's so much fun stuff on the internet. You don't have to be, you don't have to do, um, you don't have to invent these things. You can just um, steal them, which I did with this. And so this is something that's called a um, clothespin puppet. And so the way this works is I drew this alligator, which I'm going to cut out here. And I just colored him with markers and and you notice I left his teeth white because the way this is going to work is we're going to cut his teeth apart and we're going to make him into a puppet. Terrible cutting job. 
That's all right. Nobody cares if it's perfect. That's the best thing about art. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so we're going to cut right across where his teeth come together. Ooh, just like that. So if you had a clothespin, which unfortunately I don't have one right here, but if you had a clothespin, you would tape or glue each side to the clothespin. Now, probably you're not going to have a clothespin. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a little loop out of paper and tape. on the back of each one of these, each side of this. So we'll make a loop that's big enough for a finger. My fingers are big, so probably this is going to show, but if you have a small finger like a child would have, it won't show. Oh, where's my other loop? Where did it go? Oh, there it is. Okay, so we're going to put this Together like this. I firmly believe in using as much tape as you can. Um, I'm not a fan of um, I'm not a fan at all of a uh, wet glue with kids. Um, it ends up everywhere. So the more you can use dry glue, the better it is. So we're going to glue his nose on here, and then we'll glue his body on the other side. So then what happens, when the glue is dry, you should be able to put a finger in the top, a finger in the bottom. You see you can make his teeth open and close. And you can just do that with your fingers. You don't need a clothespin, but of course it's probably more fun if you had an actual clothespin. Chunk, 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 chunk. Pretty fun. You can do all kinds of little animals. and. Um, we will eventually have a, a sheet of little animals for this exact project on our um, website, and we'll have a lot of these, um, a lot of these projects on it. Another thing you can do with kids, you know, they're all looking for something to do. They're looking for something that's going to interest them, and um, sometimes it's sometimes kids are real interested in stuff, and sometimes they're just not. So you have to find something that they like to do. Um, these are buildings. So what I've done is I've just cut out um, shapes that are look like buildings, so just straight up and down, and um, some that have little roofs on them. And then, you know, the kids can just draw the, draw the lines for the windows. They can make these buildings any way they want. They can make it look like a face. They could put a big smile on it if they want, because it's their work. It doesn't matter. And... Um, they can decorate it any way they want with crayons. And so when they get them all decorated, then they can get another piece of paper. We'll just use this piece right here. They can get another piece of paper, and they can glue their buildings on the paper. And so you can see that as you get these buildings that are all different shapes and sizes on the paper, and of course they don't have to be straight, they can be any way you want, um, it's going to be a really fun project for kids and they're going to like it when it's done. Very simple to do and um, very attractive. Okay, now one other thing that you can do, if you have colored paper, you could do this with white paper, but it's more fun with colored paper. So one of the things you, you can do is you can take a piece of colored paper. This is a um, handprint butterfly. And so what you would do is you would, I'll just do it on white since I've got white right here. You would take your, fold this in half, and you would draw around your hand. Now, of course, a child has a small hand. My hand is pretty big, so I'll try to do it smaller. So then you would cut this out of your colored paper. So this is going to look like butterfly wings when we're done. So one of the things that kids love to do is they love to paste. And um, 
This is a great paste, pasting project. So here's our shape of our butterfly. I guess maybe that's the top and these are his little butterfly um, feelers. One of the things that you can do is you can get a um, piece from a catalog. I got some catalog pieces here. And I like to just tear them. I, I don't think you need to cut them. So you can just tear them out. Just get little pieces. Tear them out and glue them on. And when you get done, it's amazing. You know, you think, well, this, this is a stupid project. But when you get done, it looks pretty good. And the kids like it. They love to glue and they love to, they love to um, color. And it's not hard. And one of the things, this is just a piece from a catalog, and one of the things you can do to keep from getting um, glue everywhere is if you work on a piece of wax paper or a piece of, um, just a piece of newspaper or even, the, even a piece of page from the catalog so that you have something to protect the um, table that you're working on from the glue. Because kids get glue on their hands and they get glue on the table and they get glue everywhere. But you can see that even though I'm just tearing out these pieces from the catalog, when this is all done, this is going to look pretty fun. They're going to really like this when it's all finished. And if you started with a colored piece of paper, it would even be better. My, um, my, um, I just did this white one, so it isn't quite as pretty as if it was the colored one. And then, of course, the, um, the, um, Butterfly needs a body, and um, what I try to do is find something that's all one color in the catalog that you can catalog or, um, yeah, I guess this is a catalog. I forget where this came from. Somebody trying to sell me clothes. But here's a catalog that's got a big orange spot in it, which is going to be perfect for the body of our caterpillar, or I guess our butterfly. So we could either cut or tear an oval piece for his body. And then we can actually draw a little face on him, which is, you know, I mean, he's a happy butterfly, so he can have a little face that's happy. Maybe he could have little things on his body. So there's absolutely no way to do this wrong. Um, this is a similar one done with color paper and um, another piece of the catalog that I just cut out. So these are very, very, very simple things to do that um, can occupy kids for a long time and they're really a lot of fun. Um, the other thing I want to show you is um, a simple book. You know, um, kids love to make books, and you can make a book out of a single piece of paper. I know, hard to believe, but true. So I have some samples here. Oh, here it is. So these are two different books. This is a book that's made out of one single piece of paper. I'm going to show you how to do this. It's very, very simple. And this book is called a pair of pants book. And when you open it up, you'll see why it's called that, because it actually looks like a pair of pants when it's open before it's put together. And this is a piece of um, legal size paper, so it's just a little bit longer, but you could certainly do it with this paper as well. So the way you do this is you take your piece of white paper, or any color paper actually, and you fold it in half. This is called a hot dog fold. And I'm sure you can understand why it's called a hot dog fold, because it goes straight up and down. Let's get our Then what you're going to do is you're going to open this up, and you're going to fold this in half, exactly in half. You think this would be easy, but sometimes for kids this part is kind of hard, so they need a little help. Then you're going to take Turn this around and take the outside edge and fold it to the middle. So we folded it in half and folded it in half again, folded it in half, folded it in half again, then this edge is going to the middle like this, just like that. And then we're going to turn it over and do the same thing with the other piece. So the edge is going to the middle. 
And I'm going to put a diagram on how to do this too on our website. Because I know I'm making it look easy, but when you go to do it, you'll say, how does she do that? <laughs> it's really pretty easy. Once you do one, you'll have it. So then what we're going to do is we're going to open this up. Kind of looks like a paper airplane that's not pointed. And we're going to take our scissors and we're going to cut right along this crease that we used for the center crease. But we're only going to cut to here, right to where the first fold is. So now when you hold this up, you're going to be able to see through it like it's a little uh, hole. And then we're just going to push it together like this, fold it down, and there you see you have your amazing book. Now I know I made that look easy, but I have to tell you the first time you do this, you'll, it won't be easy and you'll say, oh my gosh, this is hard. But after you do a couple of them, you'll get it and you'll have your book and then the kids can, of course, write in the book, um, cut paper and glue into the book. And um, if you want more pages in your book, you just make another one and paste it on and you've got, you know, instead of four pages, you've got eight. And this uh, pair of pants book is very similar i got another piece of long paper here. I like to use a little bit longer paper for that because um, it just seems to lend itself to it. So this is um, the legal size paper. So we're going to make our hot dog fold here. Then we're going to do exactly like we did with our other book. We're going to fold it to the center like that. This is called a hamburger fold because, you know, kind of looks like a hamburger, I guess, if you had a square hamburger. Then we're going to take the open end of it, fold it to the middle, just like exactly the same way we did the other book. So the difference between these two books is when you, how you cut it. So the other one, we cut it right in the center and had a hole in the center. But what we're going to do with this one is we're going to open one end like this and then we're going to cut the whole thing right down that crease to the center. And now you can see we have our pair of pants book, which is why it's called a pair of pants book. Oops, I missed a little spot there. And then what will happen, we'll fold this up and we have our book. And it's the same thing. Kids can draw on it, color on it, whatever they want to do. And if you want to make it bigger, you can just um, make another book and attach it. This one's a little taller because um, the paper was a little longer. So there you have it. I'm um, not out of ideas, but um, I'll be back another day to give you some more projects to do with your kids. I'm Barbara Mason from Golden Word Arts. Mm -hmm.